You are a man. Shut the fuck up. Hey girl, do you got the you want to say? Oh. Don't worry about me, I'm a god. Fragile, anti fragile, anti-fragile. And straw besties, somehow, someway, we ended up right back where we began. Listerfem is a group that for all its potential, the outcome will always be subpar compared to the standards I've set in my own head for what is and isn't. Exceptional art direction. It's gotten to the point in which I've jokingly made the offhand comment about the L and their name standing for lackluster. In all seriousness, the messy scrambled name actually stands for I'm fearless as well as meaning six angels which have certainly aged by now. Lackluster is an adjective I found myself repeating a lot actually as I reviewed their debut. I've already given my thoughts on fearless's art direction in my what do concepts mean in pop? video but just for a sense of consistency, I'll be repeating it here. While Fearless is the soundtrack of any model's catwalk, the visual work feels laughable in its high fashion editorial pursuit. It's bland, generic, uninspiring and wasted potential for what could have redefined the concept of girl crush in K-pop. Before anyone corrects me, I am fully aware that Fearless is not girl crush in sound, however in concept, it falls comfortably in with 4th Gen's reimagining of the girl boss girl crush. Let's not be dense, this definitely a case of I'm special and strong, packaged in H&M music. To be daring is nothing unique in this generation where every other girl group has also insisted that they are daring, falling into this stereotypical badass lane that feels almost uncanny given how young 4th Gen has skewed in its debut age groups. Fearless could have set them apart by showcasing different yet still interesting ways of being without fear and regret. Instead, we get Capitalism, the three-minute movie. To my audience, there may be a question of if my bias for maximalism is to play with my viewpoint but I could assure you that Fearless's issues lie beyond its minimalist approach. Beyonce and Janet's self-titled albums are my biggest defense, as I enjoy the minimalist art direction both have to offer and I'd even go as far as to say it's the best of its kind. Both establish a look that carries on throughout the music, its message and additional visuals such as music videos. Minimalism does not automatically mean a lack of impact in terms of art direction. If less is more is the approach, then you need to make sure you have key elements in play to execute the concept and message in an interesting yet coherent way. Fearless fails at this from the promotional material, to its music video, to the photo book and the overall album packaging. Needless to say, I wasn't exactly excited to hear that a comeback was on the horizon. With new jeans unleashing what is now clearly 4th gen's essential album in terms of art direction, I had a sick feeling in my stomach that Listerfin would not be motivated to put up a fight in any way and who was surprised, they didn't. Listerfin marked the beginning of this era with a 15 second voice clip that posed a simple question, do you think I'm fragile? I was already conflicted given the question and my knowledge of their previous work. I'll explain it more when I speak on the concept photos but the question once again hints at the girl boss girl crush concept that is widely popular in their generation. This idea of being bold, cold, daring and confident which opposes the more delicate nature that women are associated fault with, especially in the slightly still conservative South Korea. This was either going to go down two ways. Either they would finally satisfy me by opening up a conversation about the pitfalls that comes with a girl bossification of femininity through thought-provoking and or interesting visuals or they'd pretend to be doing so while offering you generic, dull corporate ads ghost playing as concept photos. Spoiler alert, we have landed at the latter after being somewhat duped that this would lead to something of substance each release of the promotional material. A week after, the concept film titled The Hider was released and did not a single thing to ease my suspicions that we were in for a rinse, repeat and recycle in terms of concept execution. Other than the multilingual intro that acknowledges the cultural complexity within the group, The Hider feels as if Toyota and H&M mysteriously collaborated for a New York Fashion Week and I don't mean that as a compliment in any way. It's painfully a bore with the narration doing the hard carrying to convey the emotions that the cinematography would be able to do. What's that saying? Show, don't tell? 
It wasn't off to a great start, but the finale of the catwalk was certainly a terrible way to end this off, especially with the editing. Wasn't a fan of the constant cuts, the weird angles and the shots that felt rushed or like they went on entirely too long. By the end, I was left feeling once again disappointed by the decisions they were a team were making. I guess we can finally begin to touch on the concept photos. This era we were treated to three sets, Frozen Aquamarine, one that was oddly untitled but I'll be referring to as Volume 2 and finally Midnight Onyx. For context, Aquamarine is a pale blue or teal green gemstone which was named after the color of sea water which makes sense to the concept's name Frozen Aquamarine. It's quite clever, especially given how aqua stones can be opaque enough to resemble an abstract interpretation of ice. Leading with this concept was also a smart move given the question posed at the beginning. Do you think I'm fragile? The term fragile is often used in a technical sense, you'd most likely have seen it on packages which alludes to the product inside being easy to break. However the word transcends this definition in terms of humans and especially for women. Fragility and women have been hand in hand in discourse for years, often being weaved into sexist rhetoric. To say a woman is fragile is a political commentary on its own, echoing sentiments that women are too sensitive and emotionally immature to lead or make important decisions. Lestrofem's take on this is showcased through this concept and needless to say, it's my favorite of the bunch. While the Hydra leaves you worried with superficial messages we are being served on the Disney Channel platter, we get subversion here. Femininity is on display. Soft silk with fur hats and headbands especially with the amazing color palette of baby pink, baby blue, soft green and peach for the styling. You don't have to be in tight fitting leather and knee high cat boots in order to be anti fragile, which in their context, would be tough and thick skinned. It promotes a great message while looking great as well. Aju felt like it was just another Macy's special from them but personally I thoroughly enjoyed anti fragile through the lens of frozen aquamarine. The fake snow and soft colors reminded me of Blue Marine and Dior editorials. I do feel as if the posing could have been better but this was an amazing set put together by the team and felt realistic in terms of an editorial campaign I'd stop to find out more about. Enjoy any positivity that I offer to you just now because from here on out, I'm becoming the unhappiest person alive. Much to my dismay, we can't have good things at the Lusterfam camp and that's why Volume 2's set comes to destroy everything good we could have had. Out goes the clever subversion along with a tad bit more creativity and in comes their typical Macy catalog roots with nothing new to offer, seemingly forgetting who their target demographic is. Volume 2 is lackluster in new ways I thought it would be impossible for a group of young adults to hit. In this version, we are treated to the girls wearing jewelry which features their representative gemstones. Each concept photo has a blurb which the speaks about the gemstones in question then further delivers some commentary in relation to what it means to be strong, defying expectations and accepting oneself. It's so close to being great if we could just get these core messages shown through anything that doesn't resemble photography you see outside of Dillard's. I mean it's almost laughable how awful these are in terms of conveying their own concept. Sakura's photo in particular speaks about how she'd hoped the audience wouldn't mistake the beautiful appearance of the pink diamond for cliché fantasies which lead you to look around. Dude, you mean the cliché fantasies that have troubled this group's art direction since day freaking one? Can we be a little serious? Be fucking right? She speaks about wanting to subvert expectations and it's just like, holy shit then do it and do it good. It's so puzzling because it's almost like they're making a point that doesn't actually exist as well. What does this amateur, teen version of elegance offer to the wider conversation of what can and can't be seen as confident and bold? You're playing into the same expectations you're wanting to subvert, in a very tacky way may I add like these are some awful entire. That doesn't even break into the can of worms this could launch into if we begin speaking about how conventionally attractive young women making this commentary falls flat in terms of those who are outside the social standards of beauty and I'm not even speaking western beauty, but in their own societies. Like it begins to feel off-putting in a sense but I won't give them too much grief on that. Overall, Volume 2 was a blow to my optimistic heart. Lestrofem's creative team just seems too dedicated to telling us the messages they want to convey rather than showing us with visual work that speaks for itself. It feels like a very fifth grade English paper, very uncreative I have to sadly say. 
I mean even the layout is as stereotypical mainstream magazine as possible, it's as if they are unaware that they could critique tropes without leaning into them themselves. You don't have to cosplay as a Macy's ad then imply that you're somehow subverting expectations by doing so with contrast, as the Midnight Onyx set was next to be posted. It's so blatant, middle school and exhausting. Now we move on to the final volume, Midnight Onyx. An onyx is a all-black opaque gemstone which does leave the additional midnight name to be puzzling. When I tried to see if that was a particular shade of said stone, I was led to nothing so take that as you wish. This sadly was the final nail in the coffin for anything good that came from the concept. We're treated to Lestrofem's most common visual motif, which is the striking bold text that now finds itself as a sort of centerpiece in Midnight Onyx's photo set. This is a common technique used in high fashion, Balenciaga being the first to come to mind. The typography is the statement piece rather than the photo itself, sort of falls in the lane of anti-design. I acknowledge it and like I said before, it is executing their high fashion concept correctly but I'm still not a fan. It just feels like such a cheap cop-out, especially as half of the pictures are once again failing to follow up on their own premise. We aren't exactly seeing any new interesting ways on what being anti-fragile is, in fact, the styling seems to do the very opposite of their desire to subvert expectations and clumsily land right on them. Nobody would look at a picture of Yeonjin with a boxer glove or Anchi with her skateboard and question whether or not they are fragile. These are outdated ideals that would have been more impactful in the early 2000s but to today's standards make no sense. The cool girl, the tomboy, has been in rain for a decade now which is what led to the I'm not like other girls mindset that trapped a lot of young women. It would be cool to see the visuals take that toxic mentality and flip it out of its head, it never does. It just shows you these concept photos as a contrast to what being confident and strong can look like with mediocre payoff. Do you think we didn't know that tomboys and badass girls could be sensitive as well? I fear you might have been a tad bit late to this discussion. Like that's really my main issue when it comes to the execution of Liz Ruffin's work. They are giving subpar commentary to conversations that were already started and led by much more meaningful art. If you aren't willing to push the envelope then why even bother throwing your hat into the ring? And let's be clear, they are 100% intentional with their attempt to give social commentary. I'm in no way projecting that onto them, more is reading into what they've already provided. They speak about not being afraid of storms as they are learning to steer their ship but everything thus far in the visuals has pretty much been very milk toast and general public friendly. I fear you are afraid of storms actually. The visual work is so mainstream in fact, I fear it couldn't even spark a conversation rooted in outrage if it wanted to. It just simply exists. It provokes not a single thought out of you, especially because they spell everything out half the time. The work for the sampler shockingly did more experimenting than anything else. Even then I'd be lying to say I was a fan. The spoilers were generic 3D animation that felt primed for an NFT release and I was at least relieved that the full highlight medley went a different direction. It was going swell with Frozen Aquamarine once again proving to be their best attempt at conveying this message and I can't say I was too upset when Midnight Onyx's footage came across the screen. They went for the retro, lo-fi digital feel with it which baffled me. If you had this idea in mind for the footage, why not carry it over to the actual concept photos? Like am I the only one very confused? We could have had that more candid, personal feel easily for Midnight Onyx had they gone this route. Once again, it feels like they're failing to meet up to their own standards. You want this group to be confident and fearless yet not fearless enough that we could get some cool interesting photography not shot on a Nikon camera and photoshopped to death to remove any imperfections, resulting in basic, boring, standard photos that still preserve the visuals so not to upset your Korean audience. Do you not see how you're defeating your own message by taking absolutely no risks? Then it appears that this wasn't even something intentional as the rest of the tracks also feature the same lo-fi, quick film technique. Like oh brother, is it really too much to ask to have anything mean something? It's especially annoying because I'm pretty sure the song Good Parts is referring to the recent trend of when the picture quality is low but you're, insert a celebrity name here, which calls upon things that typically would ruin what we consider a perfect picture, such as lighting, angles etc. But this person manages to override because they are just that beautiful. If that's the case, 
The social media editing works with a lo-fi film so why not just keep that technique for that song instead of showing your hand 5 seconds in with it in Andy Fragile. Like the decisions they make don't make sense and show a larger issue of either lack of concept planning or lack of ideas in general. Then we have the album packaging which proves my point further. Please do not let their fans trick you into thinking Kintsugi, which is the style they're going for the album art, is as boring as this. Literally go Google Kintsugi now and you'll see, there's many ways to make it look very interesting, especially as Lister Films was literally done digitally. There is no excuse for the cover being this boring. Instead of Kintsugi, the first thing that came to my mind when I seen it was a damn marble kitchen floor. Like it just has that very boring feel to it. I have nothing good to say about this, I wish I was kidding. The colors of the compact version look so genuinely ugly next to each other that I pray for anyone who buys all five. Like my god, it's truly hideous with its color palette and speaking of color palette, I'm so fucking confused looking at it. The gold makes sense but the red that is featured on the any fragile stickers as well as the crimson heart prologue, whatever the fuck that is, comes out of dot not even left field, like that shit is a whole other park. Like when I'm telling you there is not a single ounce of red in any of the designs for the promotional work, in fact the only time we get any sort of red is in relation to Unchi's Ruby. Like why the hell did they just randomly throw that in? I do understand as red is associated with being bold and confident, but if you didn't feature this color in the main work why even throw it in last minute? Very disorganized. Not a fan whatsoever. I will say though that the cracks leading into each other for each album is a nice touch. It could have been better though, I also genuinely dislike when album packaging does this cause it further pushes the idea of consumerism by making you have to get all versions to get the full experience of the design. And in this case, it's definitely not even worth it getting all albums. This is not the Rev Festival. You're not getting fun interesting designs here, barely fun interesting pictures. The same Macy's ad bullshit featured on the teasers are in the photo book. Also I just found out the Crimson Heart was for the webtoon, I mean cool. I don't care cause it doesn't really feel like it did anything for the overall packaging, music video. Never did I ever expect to tune into a Listerfilm video and for it to be a little Luna ripoff but somehow, some way we've gotten here. This is definitely directly inspired by Luna's So What and Why Not, like you are the Macy and girls. Where did this art direction come from? It's so crazy how these two Luna music videos literally feeding an entire generation I'm crying. It's kinda their pink tape I fear. And yet even with all of that, the music video is still generic as fuck like whoa. Let's please have some personality, some purpose, do something. Even with how generic it was, can't say I hated it honestly. I like the group scenes but the solo scenes are so dumb and bad. Hate them so bad. I like the fact that they threw the posters of them in the back of the dancing scene like you all know I love me some poster references. Also once again, let's stick to a lane please. Why the lo-fi candid film shots were like 3 seconds long like dude you had one job. It would have been so cool to include more footage from it too, like the way their creative team refuses to take any creative chances with the group is so crazy. Which is even funnier cause once again, they not even the first to do this. Luna did it. High quality 4K HD like be serious. The little lo-fi section was all the originality you had going for you and you ain't even flesh it out. The ending is super cute, I giggled I did. Like it wasn't bad, it just wasn't them and that's what irks me like. This not even your concept, they the high fashion girls and yet everything they do couldn't be more boring or now, stolen like whoa? I'm super disappointed honestly. I didn't have high hopes at first but I was hoping from the frozen aquamarine version things would look up. Instead, the air just got progressively more dull with their art direction. I feel dissatisfied with the final product of their work. It always feels like for their concept, they could be doing much more and executing it way better. Any clever moments that take place in their art direction are always ruined by the follow-up, their art director also has a bad habit of telling instead of showing. The presentation almost makes you feel like their team don't think we're smart enough to put together details on our own. It's insulting, especially considering how generic and in your face everything already is. This is very shallow commentary, trust me we would have gotten the concept without it being spelled out. How do you feel about Lister Films art direction for Anti-Fragile? Did you feel like they improved? 
Were you impressed or did you leave with the same feelings as I did? Let me know. Bye straw besties. Thank you for watching. Who the fuck is it? You're a stay funny moron. That's it, okay? That's all I gotta say.